This week on Pure Brews, things go sour, but in a good way. Yeah, I don't really feel like there's a need to try other sour beers after having these ones. They're amazing. We head to Jolly Pumpkin and find out how they use oak barrels to create their unique taste. And later, we pull up a chair next to a fermenting tank. You know it. Join us as we check out Atwater Brewery. All across America, the craft beer industry is exploding. I'm Ryan Terpstra, professional beer lover. And I'm Shannon Long, certified beer server and owner of Brew Export. Let us be your tour guides behind the scenes, where we will meet the key players and the beer makers and learn how they turn their dreams into reality. We'll be traveling across the state and introducing you to some of Michigan's best beers. It's a craft beer revolution on Pure Brews America. So right now, it looks like we're in the middle of wine country, but we're actually in Dexter, Michigan. Yeah, there's oak barrels all around this production facility. There's actually wild yeast flying through the air. You can't see it, but trust me, it's there. And all these things come together, and they combine to form the epic beers of Jolly Pumpkin. I had to come and have some Jolly Pumpkin. <laughs> so Jolly Pumpkin's pretty well known in this area. The beer is fantastic, it's great. It's up there with the top, I'd say. They're consistent and they're really good beers. You have more than enough variety up there to get the day going. This is the place to be. Not only is Jolly Pumpkin the place to be if you want to grab a great beer, it's one of the most unique breweries in the state of Michigan, producing artisan sour style beers from the mind of their founder, Ron Jeffries. You're a pioneer as far as sour beers go. When did you uh, make that jump? We were drinking a sour ale in the uh, garden one afternoon and uh, just saying, wow, if we could just make beer like this, wouldn't this be awesome? Um, and Lori said to me, well, why don't you? And I, I, looked at, I looked at her and I'm like, really? And she said, yeah. And I'm like, okay. We invented American sour beer and uh, no brag, but we are still the best. It's not a brag if it's true, Dan. The Jolly Pumpkin Brewery is, is a sexy brewery. You're in these this space with all this beautiful handcrafted, you know, oak barrels, and they're all different shapes and sizes, and there's a history behind a lot of the different oak that's out there and that it might have come from a winery in California. It may have been from a distillery in Kentucky. The history of sour beer is traced back to Belgium, where brewers allowed wild yeast to interact with their beer through the oak barrels, changing the taste to a much more tart finish. We make a normal beer, and then we put the beer into barrels that are basically these individual microcosms of all these microorganisms and bacteria that changes the beer into this huge kind of tart, acetic, very uh, sour note that um, is the exact same way it was done, you know, six, seven hundred years ago. The only thing that we do different is we use a little bit of stainless steel in the process. The beer that you're consuming was made by a few people that are literally touching every piece, they're moving every hose, they're opening and shutting every valve, they're adding the ingredients. So there is a ton of passion uh, in this business. We're just a bunch of weirdos in Dexter that just want to make different beer. So Jolly Pumpkin makes their beers and then they stick them into the oak barrels. But what does it taste like once it comes out? Well, that is something that you have got to experience. The first one we have here is uh, Bam Beer, which is uh, of course named after our brewery dog, uh, Bam. We started with the Bam Beer, which is just a normal French style farmhouse ale. Uh, lightly tart, uh, almost uh, a really nice bitter kick from the dry hopping technique that we use in that as well. Um, which is a little bit uh, different than most farmhouse sales will be very, very smooth. But this one's a little bit more hopped up. It's good. A little fruity, citrusy. I like it. I'd definitely say it's one of the better ones I've had. It is delicious. <laughs> if you've never tried a sour beer before, this brew is a great place to start. Ron and Lori made this beer and couldn't really figure out what to name it, right? Then their dog, Bam, got hit by a car, and he's fine because Jack Russell Terriers bounce. And so in honor of that kind of whole traumatic bounce back kind of an attitude that Jack Russells have, I said, okay, we will do a beer and name it after a dog. And so we did our Bam beer. Jolly Pumpkin has locations in Dexter, Ann Arbor, Traverse City, and they recently added a tap house in Detroit. We have a very passionate fan base. Ron has made 
incredible beers. And I want to share this beer with everyone in the world because it's just that it's just that good. And it, you know, if you don't like sour beers, it's just because you haven't had the right one yet. So. It's not for everybody. Sour is tough to take sometimes. Sour is is a uh, it's kind of acquired taste. You know, you're trying all the beers. You know, that's that's kind of the next step. It's, it's good stuff though. Love the sours. I'm a big fan of the sour beers. Yeah, I don't really feel like there's a need to try other sour beers after having these ones. They're amazing. The important thing is to make a beer that tastes awesome and is artistic. And so the reason I brew beer is to create art. That in itself is hugely fulfilling to me. What is even more rewarding is that is that when we're at events and somebody really connects with a beer and they really, really get into the flavors and they see what I'm trying to do with the beer and they're like, how did you do this? This beer blew my mind. And that's probably the most satisfying. And the reason we love having our tap room and having our tasting rooms is because we can engage with the customer to educate. And when you when you pick up a beer like Jolly Pumpkin and, and you taste it for the first time, you may be completely shocked. And hopefully you're shocked in a pleasant way. So being able to engage with the customer is so important. Just this, this kind of perishable work of art, basically done the old fashioned way to kind of bring out these big sour notes that were originally an accident and uh, we're making them just the best. When you're tasting a very complex beer like Jolly Pumpkin, you need to do it the correct way. Fortunately, Dan was happy to show Shannon and I the proper tasting technique. You always uh, eat and drink with your eyes first, so the first thing you want to do is hold it up to some light. So you can kind of start to judge it right away, which is called the SRM. I'm not going to bore you with what that means, but basically the color of the beer. The second thing to do is probably the, the least snobbish, is just pass it under your nose while breathing in. I call this the drive-by. I like it. Be a beer snob. Get your nose all up in it. And then you drink everything right down, right? And this isn't wine, so don't spit it out. Yeah. And also, don't swallow it down right away. Swish it all up in your gums. Get it all around there. That right there is the Ore de Calabaza, which is our uh, Belgian-style golden ale, uh, strong golden ale. Oh, that's good. <laughs> that's real good. Uh, it's sour, super sour. It's amazing. It's got a sour taste to it, but a also hard kick to it, you know? Like when you taste it, it's smooth, but then it punches in your face. Most Belgium uh, strong goldens tend to be kind of sweet, so in order to kind of counteract that, I guess you could say uh, Ron put a little bit of peppercorn in there as well. Instead of being super sweet, it creates this nice balance of flavor that uh, JP is kind of known for. And that's one thing you guys do great that I think maybe people are like, what, you put peppercorn in there? Like, what are you doing, s like, like seasoning your beer? But it's subtle, but it makes such a difference when you do it right. We're known as the, uh, the balanced brewery, I guess you could say. The art of subtlety. Going forward, I'd really like to continue to make more beer. And we're hiring great people, and we're growing in small little communities, and especially here in Dexter, Michigan, where we're at. The vision behind Jolly Pumpkin was to be a global boutique brand, to be artistic and esoteric, and to be, I think, a global brand, you have to have a global presence, even if it's really small and there's just like one bar in Hong Kong that sells our beer, at least there's one bar in Hong Kong and hopefully the beer's fresh. <laughs> Ron has said this uh, many times, he'll make as much sour beer as people want to drink. Well guys, we had a great time at Jolly Pumpkin. Thank you for having us. And not only that, but we have a celebrity appearance. Bam the dog is here with us. And I think that deserves a special cheers. Bam. Bam. Still to come on Pure Brews, we head to downtown Detroit, roll up our sleeves and get to work. And Amanda fires up the oven for a great brisket recipe. All that and more coming up on Pure Brews America. Pure Brews America is presented to you by Meyer, where you can choose from over 200 Michigan craft beers. Ever since we first opened our doors, we've been committed to developing relationships with the very best local farmers. Because we thought that would be a sensible way to offer our customers the best, freshest produce at the lowest possible prices. Now, 80 years later, this whole locally grown thing has gotten pretty fashionable. Whoever thought common sense would be so cool, hip, and trendy? Come see for yourself. At Lawrence Technological University, you'll go way beyond the books. 
Professors with real-world experience deliver hands-on instruction in small classes, helping students land co-ops, internships, and research projects. By graduation, 80% of LTU students have jobs or plans to pursue master's degrees. And most Lawrence Tech grads earn more than their peers. So if you're ready to embrace your possibilities, we want you at LTU. Bar and everything's alright Just kicking back and taking my time And I feel fine Cause all I need is some fresh brew beer Some good live music's all I wanna hear A nice thick stout or a cool pale ale Before you choose a luxury SUV, stop by Hoot McInerney Star Lincoln and drive the amazing new Lincoln MKX. It's a stunning new expression of luxury with inspired performance and design and a long list of standard features. The all new Lincoln MKX, now available at Hoot McInerney Star Lincoln, 12 mile road just east of Telegraph. Best price, smart choice, and you get the star treatment. Pure Brews America is sponsored by Hoop McInerney Star Lincoln, located at 12 Mile and Telegraph in Southfield. It's all in the name. It's a, it's a mobile canning unit. We go to different breweries and cider houses around the state and even into Indiana. For years, those who brew beer have gone with glass bottles to package their product. But in the last few years, cans have actually become the vehicle of choice for many craft brewers around the country. When we saw some guys out in Colorado doing it, three, four weeks later, I realized I couldn't stop thinking about it. Just like, such a good idea to bring to Michigan. There's so many small breweries and we want to go around and help as many as we can. We've invested in the packaging line. We've made it easy for people to get into canning, which was before a lot tougher to do. We just don't have the, the, the capital at the moment to, uh, to have our, our canning line. Our building is all set up for expansion, but right now we've got our, our label design, we've got our cans printed, so Michigan Mobile Canning comes in. So we bring everything inside, get it all leveled out, and then we'll get running and you know we'll run about 90 cases an hour. They hook up to our tanks, they run, a, they run our production, and we, we have product to package product out in the market. It's good for everybody. We started up in March or April of this year and we do two of our products, Reactor, which is our IPA, and Mr. Orange, which is a blood orange wit. You know, we weren't sure how it was gonna go at first, you never know, right? And and it's been great. It has just skyrocketed. And so we can't keep up with it at this point. And they've allowed us the opportunity to do that. A few beer snobs may tell you that glass is the only way to go, but the benefits of cans are gaining momentum with beer makers and beer drinkers. You know, everyone was like, well, people want bottles, people want bottles, not anymore. So for us, the can takes care of that beer better. It's not going to extend the sunlight through. It's a better seal, no oxygen getting in. And you can just take it to a lot of places where they don't allow glass. In business since 2013, Michigan Mobile Canning is helping connect craft beer lovers one can at a time. You make friends everywhere you go. It's the perfect job. You're catching up with friends across the state constantly every three, four, five weeks. The different people hearing the new stories, trying the new beers, so it's, it's a pretty good fit um, for a lot of our personalities. Today we're making a beer braised beef brisket with lager. That is a tongue twister. Here's a list of the ingredients that we're using today. You can pick them all up at your local Meyer. First thing we need to do for our beef brisket is create a rub. Got paprika, fresh pressed garlic, brown sugar, fresh ground pepper, ground mustard, cumin, cayenne pepper, and salt. So next we're gonna mix up our rub all together, and I'm gonna be careful to break up these big chunks of brown sugar. We're gonna rub this on our brisket. So I'm starting with the top, and I'm just gonna rub it into the meat. I'm trying to use just about half the rub, so it's gonna give you a nice kind of even coating here on the brisket, flipping it over. And again, just rubbing this into the meat. I'm even trying to get some on the edges too. We're looking for a combination of sweetness with the brown sugar that's gonna caramelize nicely on the top of the brisket, as well as heat from the cayenne, some smokiness even from the paprika. The brisket is a flat brisket. There's a couple different kinds. 
This particular kind is gonna roast easiest and most evenly in your oven. We do wanna roast this with the fat side up. I'm gonna go ahead and cover it with plastic wrap and put that in the refrigerator for 24 hours. So it's been 24 hours. I pulled the roast out about an hour ago just to let it get up to room temperature before I put it in the oven. We've selected a lager for this particular recipe. What it's gonna do is keep the roast nice and moist while imparting some of that great beer flavor. Around but not on top is important. It helps keep that nice crust on the top of it. Now that the braising liquid is in there, I'm gonna go ahead and cover this back up with foil. As it cooks, the beer is going to braise the meat, keep it nice and tender and moist. About half an hour ago, we pulled our brisket out of the oven. It cooked for about three hours at 350. Resting the meat's gonna help keep the juices inside of it and make it easier to handle while you're slicing it. Since brisket is a tougher cut of meat, even though we've braised it and taken care to make it as tender as we can, you still wanna cut it across the grain to help make it easier to eat as well. And that is how you make beer braised beef brisket with lager. At Pure Brews America, not only do we wanna tell you great stories about beer, we wanna help you enjoy drinking it too. And to do that, we recruited our friends at Meyer to help. Not only is Meyer the destination for the full beer experience, they offer the biggest craft beer selection in the state, and they also have a way to simplify choosing a beer that you will like. On your phone, all you have to do is visit Meyer.com slash selection. And look at this, you can pick your pour. That's a way for you to choose which beer you want based on the type of flavor you are looking for. I got inspired by Jolly Pumpkin to look for something sour and wild. So I click on that area and pick your pour, and there it is, bam beer. Maybe you'd prefer something dark and roasted. Head on over to that tab and discover a beer like Atwater's Vanilla Java Porter. The Pick Your Pour area also recommends other beers that fall into your favorite flavor category and food to pair them with that you can pick up while you're shopping at your local Meijer. Plus, right under Pick Your Pour is a tab for what's on sale, where Meijer offers the lowest beer prices allowable by law in Michigan. Let Meijer help you pick out the right craft beer. Head to Meyer.com slash selection and try out Pick Your Pour. Up next on Pure Brews, one of the best mottos we've heard so far. Kind of our mantra of we drink all we can and sell the rest. It's a slogan any employee would love as we introduce you to the crew of Atwater Brewery. It's time for On Tap Trivia, brought to you by the Michigan Brewers Guild. The alcohol content of a beer is measured in terms of ABV, which stands for alcohol by volume. Most beers fall between 3% and 12% ABV, but this beer is considered to be the strongest in the world. Is it Brewmeister Snake Venom, Dogfish Head 120 Minute IPA, Samuel Adams Triple Bach, or Brew Dog Tokyo. Find out when Pure Brews America returns. down with attorney Sabrina Cronin and her law firm, they'll stand up for your rights. Backed by a full-service investigative division, Cronin Law delivers results, whatever your legal issues may be, your problems on the table, and see how much more Cronin Law can do for you. We're the Cronin Law Firm, bringing more to the table.
pictures. At Lawrence Technological University, you'll go way beyond the books. Professors with real-world experience deliver hands-on instruction in small classes, helping students land co-ops, internships, and research projects. By graduation, 80% of LTU students have jobs or plans to pursue master's degrees. And most Lawrence Tech grads earn more than their peers. So if you're ready to embrace your possibilities, we want you at LTU. Welcome back to Pure Brews America. Here's the answer to this week's On Tap Trivia. What is generally considered the strongest beer in the world? Brewmeister Snake Venom, Dogfish Head 120 Minute IPA, Samuel Adams Triple Bach, or Brewdog Tokyo? At 67.5% alcohol by volume, Brewmeister Snake Venom from Scotland is the world's strongest beer. So enjoy, but be careful. Today we are in the D, downtown Detroit, to grab a beer at one of the biggest breweries in the state of Michigan. Yes sir, we are just down the street from Joe Lewis's Iron Fist at a production facility that doubles as a brew pub. We are at Atwater Brewery. This is a very Detroit uh, style facility here. We want them to know they're drinking uh, beer that was made in Detroit by people who live here. Great city, good place to hang out, really good beer. And I love this place. It's just so comfortable, it's relaxed, you know, it's just so chill. I think it's got like this cool character to it where it's this old school feel, it's not a brand new building. It's actually a really cool vibe and the fact that it's not a bar, that it's just a tasting room, makes it really cool, it's not elitist. The atmosphere is awesome. It's like you're sitting in a warehouse, right in the middle of, right in the middle of a brewery. Atwater Brewery was founded in 1997 with the purpose of carrying on the rich history of breweries in the city of Detroit. And this place has an assembly line feel to it because you can grab a beer literally next to a tank making their next batch. We stop all of our production and then we open up the tap room is kind of how we do it. It's worked out really well. Instead of looking through a glass wall, they can actually sit there and amongst the tanks in the production area. Everybody starts looking up and looking at these big fermenters and looking at the brew house and being in the middle uh, between the brew house and the cellar over here is something really special. You know, we take our making of our beer very seriously, but we don't take ourselves seriously, I guess is the easiest way to explain it. We like to have a lot of fun. If you can't have fun in the beer business, then forget it. Kind of our mantra, we drink all we can and sell the rest. I'm assuming your employees really like that slogan too? They do like it, yes, just not during the day. Our passion here is we, and we're very unique, is we make German style lagers. That really sets us apart. But then it was just a happy accident that I ended up in Germany. And that's when it really opened my eyes that there was a lot more going on in the beer world than just what I could get my hands on here. Our uh, brew house is uh, one of only three in the United States from uh, Kasper Schultz in Bamberg, Germany. 89% uh, of every craft beer is an ale. Well, we make some pretty kick-ass lagers, and we're proud of that. Germans uh, that make lager beer, they are the best at it. They started it. So being a German brewery, being really good at lager beer is, is what we're passionate about and, and what we're really good at. The four basic ingredients in beer, you know, pr pretty much they're all basically the same. You know, everyone's using them. So how can you control the flavors that you get out of them? What can we do different to get something else out of the beer that other people can? And they've got me working here at Atwater. I'm on the brew team today. If you could hit number 18, that's going to turn off the heat. Do I have to hold it or nope, just, just press it? it? Dirty Blonde is in the whirlpool right now. It's going to come through the hoses. I have to kind of bleed off some of the water and then pull these at the exact same time to send Dirty Blonde up into the fermentation tank where it's going to sit for 12 to 14 days. So today I easily have the best job. I get to sit here and drink beer with Rob. So we have Dirty Blondes. I love the label. <laughs> oh, we have a lot of fun with this one. So this is actually one of our flagship brews. This is a wheat ale with a little bit of orange peel and coriander. I normally like IPA, but the Dirty Blonde is my choice when I'm in Atwater. It's like that light flavor. It's not too dark. 
you know, it doesn't have such like a strong taste to it. I really love it. You can buy it at the grocery store. So I can have it here and at home. It's really good. So we actually came up with this brew back in the early 2000s and we didn't know what to call it. There's so many wheat beers out there. So we had a little contest and the winner locally here in Detroit, she came up with the idea of Dirty Blonde. And uh, this is one of those beers where it doesn't matter what season it is, what time of year, who doesn't like a Dirty Blonde? Like many other breweries throughout Michigan, Atwater uses their fans' love of beer to help raise money for some great causes. We know each other, we hang out together, we have tons of fun events here. Lily Fest was, uh, it, it happened pretty quickly, I think. Uh, Jeff Levine's uh, daughter needs a kidney transplant, so we decided to try and help out as much as we can. So we just put a little beer festival together and uh, had a dunk tank. We got uh, beer from different places all over the state. Truly, all these guys are, you know, great friends. A lot of these people have friendships and relationships that go back 10, 12 years. Yeah, we're all about the community, and uh, we have a beer garden tap house project. We have one in Gross Point Park right now that has uh, done extremely well and won a couple of awards. What we do love over there is the community seating. Uh, everybody's sitting together, really enjoying and having a great time, and that's what uh, the beer garden tap house project is bringing. And uh, we're going to be opening one up in uh, Grand Rapids come the uh, spring, summer of 2016. So that's one of the expansions that we're doing. So part of bringing Detroit everywhere is we want to bring Detroit to the second largest city, which is Grand Rapids. Vanilla Java Porter. This sounds like something I'd eat with like breakfast. <laughs> this is our breakfast beer. And this is actually the one that we sell the most of. Um, so we're using dark roast whole coffee beans and actually vanilla bean extract on this beer. So it is lighter in style, so it's a dark beer. Like I said, you can have it any time. And it really does have a lot of that great coffee aroma. A little bit of mocha, a little bit of chocolate. That smells like a fresh brewed cup of coffee. Vanilla Java is one of my favorite beers of all time. Any beer is pretty good, but this is really good. It tastes like coffee, it's fantastic. And it's on a light porter base, so you can drink it for breakfast. You can drink it at night. It really doesn't matter. Drink it anytime. I'd like a stack of chocolate chip pancakes in this beer every morning when I wake up. <laughs> Put it in the pancake batter. Oh my goodness. Did they do that? <laughs> Why not? It's a great. Let's do it. <laughs> We're very proud of where we are right now. It's, it's taken a long time to get here. The future's uh, great. We, we love that the craft beer industry is going to continue to grow and we're going to continue to grow out west. Uh, we're going to have a plant in Austin, Texas that will supply the, uh, the west coast for us. And uh, we just launched California. We're uh, going to have a plant in, uh, in the southeast as well to kind of take care of those markets. We're in 27 states right now. and We're going strong. We're about to open up uh, into uh, Florida, Oregon, and uh, not stopping there. Flatwater was an absolute riot. I can't wait to come back. Yeah, if you're in downtown Detroit, you got to come check this place out. And a big thanks to them for letting us come down. Cheers. Cheers. Yeah. <laughs> Next week on Pure Brews, a taste of Bavaria as we visit the historic Frankenmuth Brewery. And thanks to Belgian tradition and a local mission, Brewery Vivant is one of the stars of the Grand Rapids beer scene. Join us next week for the season one finale of Pure Brews America.